Good day, tennis fans, and welcome to this week's Point Counterpoint. I'm Ted Leepak, and joining me is Blair Henley, and today we're talking about getting more money in the Grand Slam events. The ATP Players Council is in the news again. After newly appointed member Gilles Simone argued that women do not deserve equal prize money at the Grand Slams, another new member, James Saritani, is arguing that players deserve to get more than the 5 to 15 percent of total revenues they currently take home. Is this greedy? It's very greedy. I think James Saritani needs to shut up and take the money. I mean, he's he's way low on the rankings. If this was Federer or Nadal making a point, it'd be one thing. I understand he's on the player council, but he needs to he needs to take the money and run. I agree. We don't know who James Saratani is, probably because he's, like you said, low on the totem pole. However, he is elected to the ATP Players Council. He went to Brown, has an economics degree, knows what he's talking about, and, and I think he's arguing for the little guys here. If you think about it, we don't really get to see what goes on on tour past, say, the top 50 in the world. It's no. not really a pretty sight. Uh, Lucas Rosal, who, who just upset Rafa Nadal, came into Wimbledon, had to take you know a flight to another city, take a bus uh, into London, and then stay with somebody he didn't know because he couldn't afford lodging. That's the reality of the game for those lower-ranked players, Look, and I don't think it's a terrible thing it's to not argue pretty. for more money. It's not pretty, but the point is, it's tennis. If you want to, to make money, do better. That's what it comes down to. Either play the hand you've been dealt or fold it. He does have a point, though, when he said that in the NBA, they had their famous lockout, or infamous lockout, I should say. They were arguing, and they are getting around 50% of the total wow. revenue pie. It's a Tennis lot. players oh. are getting 5 to 15%. I don't know wow. that he's totally out of line to ask for more money. All right. Good point. But uh, it's still tennis. It's the hand you've been dealt. If you want to go to another sport, go to another sport. Get good at basketball. That's my point. So, All right. On to the next question. The roof on center court at Wimbledon is four years old, but thanks to an extra rainy June and early July in the UK, it's been showcased over the last couple weeks like never before. So, did the, court, the, did the roof on center court end up causing more problems than it solved? Overall... Roof was a good thing. I think it was great for the fans. They always got to have some tennis on TV. I think it stunk for the players. I think, first yeah. of all, when the roof closes, the conditions change totally. Who knows if, if Rafa would have lost that match if he got to play oh, the whole thing outside. You never know. It changes conditions drastically. It makes the ball heavier. It makes the, uh, the points play slower. And I also feel like it stinks if you're not on the center court. If you're not you know, King Roger Federer and get to play on center court every day, you're out on those outside courts, you know, playing eight-hour matches because you had five rain delays in between. I see your point, but at the same time, you got to be fair to the fans. There needs to be one one game at least being played on center court, one match going the whole time. That's it's a Grand Slam event. You can't just have it's England. It's going to rain all the time. That's my point. It's yeah. rainy. You got to close the roof. You got to do what you Fair enough. Have. I will say this makes the USTA National Training Center in New York look pretty darn good for not deciding to add a roof to their multi million dollar renovations. Uh, I don't think the New Yorkers would have done so well with all this controversy. I don't know if you saw Andy Murray got put on court one the other day and not center court and had to Shame. have a rain delayed match with Marin Cilic while you know, Federer got to finish, it, finish his match in no time. Mm. It's, a, it's a shame that all the players can't get the equal rest but you still got to close the roof. Yeah. Plain and simple. Well, all I know is if Federer ends up winning Wimbledon, he has the roof to thank. He needs to share some of his prize money. <laughs> and on that point, we're going to close our this week's Point Counterpoint. I'm Ted Leepak. This is Blair Henley. This has been Point Counterpoint, and we'll see you next time here on Tennis Now.